Folks, I've rounded up 10 hydraulic tips for you today to make life easier when owning a tractor. This stuff can be confusing and frustrating, but if you know what you're doing ahead of time, well, you're gonna shorten that learning curve and make life a breeze. Now I learned something new myself that I thought, and maybe it is relatively low probability, but it wound up saving me a $3,800 bill. Well, it cost me like 150 bucks or something, but so save me like $3,650. I'm gonna make you wait for that one just a little bit. We'll tell you a few other tips and then I'll tell you how that one turned my frown upside down. Tip number one, just making it up on the spot because I am reminded right now that I need to do it on this one here. I lost my dust covers. I need to get some new dust covers for these two hydraulic couplers. They're just sitting there, just begging for dirt and dust to get in there and then be a challenge to clean out or get into my hydraulic system. That's just a problem waiting to happen. So you can go online and order dust covers. Just make sure they're fitting the right size couplers that you have on your tractor. But how do you know what size couplers you have on your tractor? That is a really challenging thing to figure out. I tried to find, I did some Googling to see if there was a hydraulic fitting size charts, something that's a visual indicator where you can tell what size couplers you're staring at. It's pretty easy to tell if they're male or female, but there's Pioneer, there's flat face, there's three eighths, there's quarter, there's half inch, there's all this other kind of stuff. And it's not, unless you really know what you're looking at, it's not easy to tell. I found a really handy chart over on Tractor Mike's website. He's another YouTuber in the tractor space as well, putting out great videos every week. Make sure you check him out. So we'll put a link to that product page as well. I think it's actually in a different listing where he has this chart up there, but it's just, it's just easy to read, easy to understand and concise. So take a look at that if you're struggling to figure out what fittings you have on your tractor. This one's a big one, folks, okay? It's gonna happen to the best of us. And, <laughs> well, this is one that you go through it once and then you, you hopefully remember and don't do it again. But before you disconnect your loader or really any hydraulics that are on your tractor, so if you have a grapple connected or, you know, hydraulic top link and you wanna take that off, turn the tractor off, rotate this around. You could hear it, maybe you can't see it moving, but you're gonna relieve the hydraulic pressure that's going through the lines on both sides of those couplers. And so that's gonna make life so much easier when you go to reconnect them back up. If you don't do that, and I've done it myself, all right, you're gonna have a lot of pressure on the, the, the loader side of that line when you wanna go and hook it back up to your tractor. And you're gonna to have to somehow release that pressure that's on there and it can be dangerous, it can be a mess because that pressure is built up. And so you wanna wear the proper safety attire on there. And I've been able to sometimes put a rag or a board and push it against a, you know, the loader to a heavy piece of steel or something on the ground, like a board on the ground to relieve that, or maybe use um, like a set of channel locks or nipex uh, to pinch that down. Or sometimes you can even use some wrenches and crack that fitting and just let it slowly leak out just a little bit just to get that pressure out of there. Otherwise it can be impossible to hook up those hydraulics again. Be prepared to get messy if you're gonna have to do that because there's hydraulic fluid that's gonna fall out somewhere. But again, it's one of those lessons, if you can avoid it, fantastic. If it happens to you, you're not alone. It's happened to pretty much just about every tractor owner out there before. Okay, connecting hydraulic couplers. Seems pretty straightforward, but sometimes it's not, okay? And uh, number one, probably the biggest issue that I'm contacted about is on backhoes where they're just not working. The hydraulics are connected just like they're connected here, but they're not working. There's no response. And the reason for that is pretty simple. It just looks like it's connected, but it actually isn't, all right? And if you yank on it really hard, you'll pull it apart without you know, pulling back the collar. And that's gonna be a common problem uh, on the Kubota, on the John Deere, just on hydraulics in general is where it looks like it's just seated in there properly, but it's not. And sometimes you'll see uh, hydraulic oil flowing out through there too when you go to move a lever because it's kind of sort of seated enough to open up and have some flu some flu, some flow going through uh, the, that direction in the line there, but it's not enough to make it work properly. So let's take a look at some other hydraulic connections as well, so you can see firsthand how to hook them up. All right, so this style of coupler is called a Pioneer or an Ag style coupler. Pretty easy, after you, most tractors have these, okay? The flat face style is another very common one, more likely seen on construction equipment, sometimes on tractors too. So you're gonna have a collar and a female and a male side. You simply pull back, I almost forgot. Work your joystick or work your lever for the hydraulics in both directions. Relieve any built up pressure if there is some. Then you're gonna pull or push back on the male collar and you'll see some little bearings in there and then you can pull right out. Gonna be a little bit of fluid, all right? That's just nature of the beast. 
Now to reverse the process, here's a good look at that uh, male side. If your pressure's built up, you gotta push, you gotta detent this little pin that's in the middle here to relieve that pressure or crack the fitting and let some fluid leak out or the proper PPE. Now to reconnect, kind of just seat it in there gently. You can't push it the whole way. You have to get that collar pushed back and then it seats in there. Give it a little yank to make sure it's seated properly and away you go. Okay, so now we're looking at flat face couplers. Again, pretend one of these is on the machine side and then one is on the attachment. Exact same thing going on. You need to just pull back on a collar to release and there you go, okay? Now what you see, the difference is the fact that these are flat faces, all right? And so putting them together is really easy. You're just gonna take the male side and just push it in to the female side, okay? There's no collar that you have to push back or pull back on. You just simply push it in there and it locks in place. You can hear that snap, hopefully. Now, for lack of a better term, you have a dot and a slot, okay? And if you have that not aligned, you can't pull back on this collar to release it. It's kind of a, I don't know, maybe a safety mechanism of some, of some sort. If you align that just right, like this, that's when you can push back on that and everything releases just fine. And so if you, if you can't get the, the coupler released from there, maybe it is a pressure issue where you have to relieve the pressure, or maybe you just have to align that slot properly. And one of the things that I actually like a lot about flat face couplers, besides the ease of connecting them, is the fact that they're flat faces, all right? And unlike the Pioneer, the Ag style, when we showed you on the first one around, there's that big cavity there that they're not all upright like this, but no matter what direction they are, there's look, there's space for debris to get trapped in. Where there's not really any space for debris to get trapped here, you can just brush off the top flat surface pretty easily and hook them up. A little bit different. You don't need dust covers on these versus the Pioneers. Here is a good example of why you want these dust covers on here. It is like a, it's like the dust bowl around here lately. So this tractor, we were doing some tilling. It's just absolutely disgusting. But I wanna show you this last type of, um, Hydraulic coupler, kind of hard to see. And this is on the back of a Kubota and I don't know what it's called. Um, I don't know anybody else that has this style, but I think it's super stinking cool. You don't have to pull back in any collar. It's not a flat face though. It's still some sort of Pioneer or Ag style coupler. Just trying to get all the debris away from there so I don't clog it up. And so all I'm gonna do, and I don't know how, honestly, I don't know how this works, I really don't but you just yank them out and you push them back in. There's no collar of any kind. It's not, again, a flat face. I, I don't know the, the, the sorcery behind it, but I like it. And then you could slap this dust cover down right on it like that, really nice. Pop that back open and you're back in place. That was it, that's it. We are proud to be sponsored by RimGuard Solutions, a liquid ballast weight. It goes right inside your tires, completely hidden. We're big on safety on this channel. These tractors are just too light and tippy right out of the factory. Not only is it gonna help with safety, keeping those rear tires planted on the ground, it helps with loader efficiency and traction too. The benefits of RimGuard include being the heaviest all natural liquid ballast weight on the market. It's not gonna corrode your rims like the old calcium chloride. It's not gonna freeze and it's available at over a thousand dealers nationwide. Find the dealer near you at RimGuardSolutions.com. Speaking of hydraulic pressure, this is a smart way to make sure that doesn't happen to you where you, you have too much pressure in the line to hook it up to your tractor. The problem is, is every setup is not gonna have a male and a female. So sometimes you can't swap that out. Just swap out a fitting on your tractor so you can have a male and a female or same thing on uh, your attachment too. But I loop these together so that that flow is going through both ways and it's not locked in here at you know, behind the fitting on each side, that can make it a super hard challenge to hook up to your tractor. Uh, actually, with these forks, I didn't do this. I forgot to do this last year when we were shooting a pallet fork video. I wanted to hook it up to my skid steer and show you guys how they worked, how they went in and out, and I couldn't. We were in the middle of nowhere. I didn't have the tools with me to relieve the hydraulic pressure, and we couldn't get the fittings onto the, the skid steer itself. So if you do this, though, then you simply disconnect them like that. You can see how easy they disconnected. When they're sitting outside, I know it's good to keep your attachments inside if you can, but when they're sitting outside, especially with temperature changes, when they're in the baking sun, well, that pressure is gonna build up in there even more and want to expand and make this even more of a problem. So do this if you had the opportunity to do so, but there is a solution if you don't. And that would be the hose end chamber, which is designed specifically for applications like this. When your attachments are sitting outside, and it could be your backhoe, it could be 
um, a, a flex wing mower, anything that's gonna have hydraulic lines on it, maybe that are gonna sit for a long period of time in the exposed sun. Situations where you'll have these huge temperature variations that number one, can make it challenging to then hook up to your tractor or your skid steer, whatever it is, when you need to use it. But number two, think about those pressure variations that are occurring and going on. That's causing damage, albeit most likely slowly, to the hoses, to the fittings, perhaps to motors, anything else that's on the equipment as well. And so if you want to avoid a situation like that, well, there's a hose end chamber that you can purchase, plug it into your fittings that are on there. It is basically gonna be like a little extra reservoir so that fluid can go in and out of there freely instead of causing damage to the rest of your hydraulic components. Okay, there's a big one here. Again, it really did. It saved me $3,650. And all it was was a hydraulic filter. I, I'm not kidding you. We had the tech out to our shop to look at the John Deere 4720. The rear three point, um, the, the rear hydraulics, none of that was working. And he had gone through a bunch of different things, troubleshooting, all this and that, and basically came down to, we needed to replace a big um, hydraulic cylinder block that's back there. And it was to take it out, put it back in and everything else, it's gonna be 3,800 bucks. And I was like, that's not cool. And uh, I, was, I was pretty, I was really frustrated at that point because that's just a ridiculous amount of money uh, to make your hydraulics work. And the weird thing is, is that uh, a year ago, maybe more, we reported in a video of a similar problem with the 4720 where everything went from working fine to just not working. They got it into the shop and took a look at everything and couldn't figure it out and it just was working fine for them. So it was this crazy kind of ghost problem that we weren't sure what was happening. Long story short, this, this on-site technician said, hey, you know what? It, this could be a, just a hydraulics issue. Maybe your hydraulic flow is, is just too low. Uh, hydraulic filter hasn't been changed in a while. Let's swap that out and see what happens. And lo and behold, swapping out that hydraulic filter with a brand new one got us right back in action, right back in the game, and everything is working perfectly. I almost still can't believe it, but that's all it took. You're looking here at some DIY hydraulics. All right, a lot of tractors are not gonna come out with the grapple hydraulics on the front, the rear remote on the back, the stuff you need to use the attachments you want, like a grapple, uh, like a rear hydraulic top link that we talk about a lot. The power beyond that's on here to run that backhoe is not the same thing. We'll get into that in just a minute. And the challenges is that adding OEM hydraulics after the fact, man, that's an expensive game to do. And so you can get do-it-yourself solutions like what you see here from Summit Hydraulics. You save 5% with code GWT, takes a couple of hours of your time, but you save hundreds of dollars, it's hard to beat that. And there's a lot of terminology in this video. We've done a whole in-depth video focusing on the difference in various kinds of hydraulics, okay? And so this is actually, on the Kubota, a third function, an aftermarket third function, but there's another kind that's called a diverter, like what's on the Summit tractor, and we installed on the John Deere 1025R. Just a, a, a difference in how it works. Um, in my opinion, it's splitting hairs on smaller machines. They don't have a lot of hydraulic flow anyway, so they sort of work the same. Once you get the bigger tractors, it's more of a difference. Then you have power beyond. You, oops, you'll have a couple of remotes or a couple of ports on the back side. sometimes three ports depending on the size of the equipment. Power Beyond does not have a lever anywhere on the tractor to control whatever is plugged into those hydraulics. You have to have a lever on whatever's plugged in, like how the backhoe has two levers there to move it around. So that's different from a regular rear remote, okay, <laughs> which will have a hydraulic lever on the tractor somewhere. So if you have a hydraulic top link, there's a lever on the tractor when you have it plugged in to extend that top link out or retract it back in. And then lastly, hydraulic multipliers. And I absolutely love hydraulic multipliers. They're one of the best values that are out there. You can add on up to additional, an additional uh, five ports for like, like probably 20% of the cost if you were able to do that through the OEM. It's just a crazy amount of savings and Again, another Summit Hydraulics product that's there, but I have one on uh, the Kubota M4. We put one on uh, the John Deere 4066 that I had. I'm also gonna put one on very soon on the Summit TX25. It comes standard with one rear remote, which is pretty awesome, but we're using that on the hydraulic top link right now. I am fully expecting to need more remotes next winter for my snowblower. Um, if I wanna hook up any other hydraulic attachment on the backside and use it in conjunction with the hydraulic top link, well, you need to have more remotes to do so. And that's where a hydraulic multiplier comes in handy. Now, speaking of hydraulic top links, super handy item. Again, you can see this is a John Deere 2038R. It's got two rear remotes. You see four ports there, that's two remotes, all right? 
two couplers make one hydraulic circuit or one remote. You have to have flow going this way and then flow going back the other way, all right? This machine here has a hydraulic top and tilt kit. Very handy, we've shown you these on other tractors as well. Working on getting you a complete kit that you can add to your tractor. That's gonna be sometime in the future. We'll get you more information on that. For now, you can buy those hydraulic top links on Amazon. We have a bunch of links there where we've bought some that have worked for us. And so you just wanna basically get the shortest length of your top link and then unscrew it to get the longest length and let that kind of serve as your guide and try to find a hydraulic top link that matches about those same dimensions. But it's staring me in the face, and perhaps I should have thought about this earlier, we talked about those dust covers, but some other ways to protect your hydraulics from exposure or from getting pinched or from bending and kinking and all that kind of stuff, and just looking cool, maybe even identifying them. Outback wrap, pretty good stuff. This, this helps keep these hoses kind of connected together and sandwiched together and up out of the way. It's a really cheap thing to add on to your tractor as well. And if you're not sure which hoses go where, you color code them with different colors that are on here. And also we did a video talking about long-term storage. We were gonna park our backhoe all winter and you get some concerns about pitting on these exposed cylinder rods that are there and you can wrap it in this real, it's kind of a nasty tape, but it's not that bad. Um, but it's gonna completely protect your, your exposed rods from from corroding or from pitting over the winter from long-term exposure to the elements. It sounds like that's used a lot in marine applications too. It was kind of pricey, but potentially compared to the cost of getting a cylinder rebuilt, it could be worth it. Really quick one for you, and honestly, I don't see this one, on, I've never seen it on a tractor, definitely could be on there uh, at some point, but this is a relief valve, all right? And so you can pull that to relieve the pressure, the built up pressure in there. And if, you're, if your hydraulics happen to have a little handy pull tab like that, give it a yank when you're trying to disconnect things or plug things back in and it could relieve that built up pressure and make life a lot easier. Something I wish all hydraulics had. That's gonna wrap it up for us today, folks. Hopefully you learned something new. It shortens your learning curves, it saves you some frustration or maybe solves a problem that you're, you're facing right now. But that's what we do here, folks. We show you new products, give you the tips to hopefully help you out, make your life easier. Show you projects in action all around the farm. So make sure you check out those other videos too. And I wanna remind you, if you are in the market for a tractor attachment, something for the front end loader or the three point hitch, we'd love to earn your business. We sell and ship all over the country every day of the week. Check out our website, goodworkstractors.com. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon. Yeah.